obviously, I, I want to introduce you all to Ants and Ash, but part of the beauty of the character is the mystery of who is Ants and Ash. It's one of the things that drew, drew me to the character. I liked that on first reading, feels like a bad guy, I guess. He feels like he's the, the counter to the, the heroes. Um, but then as the episodes go on, and as I kind of got my head around the character more and more before we started shooting, I kind of understood it's not as simple as that. And it's kind of a beautiful thing in the modern world that in debris, there are good guys and bad guys within the government. There are good guys and bad guys within those who are opposing the government. It's not this simple black and white, here's the goodies, here's the baddies, who's going to win? It's like, at one point you may think this guy's a goodie, then they turn out to be a baddie, and vice versa. And I like to think of Ants and Ashes very much a good guy with the right outlook and methods, but you may think otherwise. I think what the audience will like about Ants and Ash is the mystery. He's very calm and cool in situations that aren't naturally calm and cool. Um, Ants and, and the Influx team know a lot more than you guys know as viewers and often more than Brian and Fanola know as they turn up to a case. So he's got this calmness and in control of everything, which is kind of alluring um, to watch and, and, and want to understand why he's like this and how he's so relaxed. What does he know? So the idea of debris is that all these bits of space debris have landed in different fields and different places around the world. Um, and each piece has different properties and can affect the people who find it or touch it or are near it or pass by in different ways. So the conflict of debris as a show is the American team, governmental team, going out to try and collect these pieces and make them safe and the, the rival team, let's say, I don't want to say the bad guys, but the rival team, Influx, of whom Anson Ash is part of, also trying to collect as many as possible, understand the technology and, and use it. So that's kind of the, the basis of the world in which we find debris. What I loved about this, I mean, obviously the conflict between two powerful forces, one more mysterious than the other, although I won't specify which one's the, the government and which one isn't. Um, whilst that was engaging and exciting, the thing that really just got me on board was the fact that each episode, there's so much freedom and so many places that it can go because each debris piece can do a different thing and have different properties. So it kind of gives up endless possibilities of what the... Brian and Fanola, uh, our, our FBI agents, find and and what my team could possibly stumble upon as well. So, yeah, it's not just, here's debris, here's what it does, now we're going to explore that for a whole series. It's like, no, it can do anything. You, you've no idea where this is going. One of the great things about the show is each week there is a new mystery to solve. There's a new piece of debris and it's not like they, they come with instruction manuals and you know what is being affected, how it's being affected. The general situation will be Brian and Fanola will turn up and have to try and figure all this out, find where the debris is, find what effect it's having, what, how they can remove it, how they can so safely resolve it, and who else is after it. Because more often than not, you'll find that, that my guys of Influx have either got there before them or have got a bit of research, have been l looking for a specific piece. So... You get that each week, there's a, there's a mystery to solve and the way it is resolved the, then affects the kind of ongoing tally of who's, who's winning, who's getting the most pieces, who's, who's controlling stuff, who has the most powerful pieces of debris and what do they want to do with it. The beauty of this concept is it kind of, it, 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 it plays to the sci-fi nature but it, trans, it transcends the sci-fi kind of genre as well because it is very each story is a human story you know each episode we stumble upon these new people who their lives have been changed potentially irreparably by this particular piece that has landed near them or that they've found or that they've taken control of we are always chasing these shortcuts i guess and quick answers and that often plays into debris the initial 
reaction or effect will maybe seem like it's a quick answer to make your life amazing, to improve, to, uh, to solve the problem that you've had, to bring back that person you miss. But in reality, it's never that simple. So it becomes this conflict between what needs to be done, what you maybe instinctively want to do and what's best for humanity. And our characters go through that as well. So Brian and Fanola are constantly having to, to explore that and decide, right, well, we know what we need to do as government officials, but what do we do on a human level? Like this particular person is experiencing this. How do we resolve that? Rather than turn up, gr grab the bit of debris and go home. You're going through that mystery as a viewer, but the characters are going through that mystery at the same time. There's so much doubt f from Fanola and from Brian about each other, about the people attached to them, about the people controlling them, um, and about the people that they're kind of seeing as their enemy and, and they're up against. What is the, the intent of, of Influx and Ants and Ash and, and that whole gang? But then also, what's the intent of the people leading us? So I love that not only are these things the viewer is going to witness, but the characters are going through at the same time. So on Debris, I'm playing Craig Maddox. I'm having the greatest time playing this guy. Uh, it's a great, great part. I play uh, a CIA handler for Jonathan Tucker's character, Brian. Craig has been tasked to sort of uh, head this very secretive, very um, sophisticated special ops wing of the CIA. He's a guy who is part scientist, part soldier, and part administrator. So he's wearing a lot of hats. Uh, speaking of mystery, he's a guy uh, that has a lot of secrets, as anybody in this world would have. What's most interesting I'm finding about the character is that Joel, Joel Wyman, the creator, uh, lets us in on his private life, on his home life, um, struggles that he has on the home front, which makes for really great stories. You can imagine in this, we're actually sitting in my office at Orbital. Isn't it amazing? I know. I feel very powerful even just sitting in it. This is a difficult world to, to navigate um, if you're in a relationship with somebody in this world, right? There's uh, uh, so many boundaries in the relationship, so much unknown, so many things that have to be kept secret, and we get to see how this affects his, his long-term marriage. We find out early in the series that he has a son um, and a whole history with this child. So I thought it was a great challenge for me as an actor to try to get inside the mind of somebody who is way smarter than I could ever hope to be. Extremely cerebral and very tactical, right? Approaches life as a scientist and yet life doesn't work like science all the time. There are certain actions that he takes that the audience won't quite understand. Um, he's a mysterious guy who's uh, all of his cards are very very hidden. To find out what's making him tick, I think, is what will make them come back um, week after week. And the relationship uh, between Maddox and Brian, um, Jonathan Tucker's character, is a very interesting relationship, too. Father-son, older brother, younger brother, um, uh, uh, commander to soldier. It's a complicated relationship, and we're having a great time working on those scenes. All of the characters are extremely relatable. Again, Joel is really masterful at creating really smart people <laughs> who talk way fancier than you can talk and know things uh, that most of us don't know, um, um, and yet who still have to deal with reality. Uh, they still have beating hearts. And what's really interesting about a character, as smart as these characters are, is they know how to compartmentalize. They know how to sort of separate um, emotion from this work, this soldier spying work that we do, to see how far they can be pushed, right? To see how far, what is the edge that, that they will go to before um, our main characters start to, to, to get rattled is really interesting to watch, I think. The debris in the title refers to um, actually a ship that is in orbit, right? Um, there's an explosion. And over the course of about Three years, particles, matter from the ship, start to fall toward Earth. This happens sort of before our series starts, right? So the world powers, right, um, 
Russia, China, the U.S., Europe, we all, all of their versions of the CIA, all of their top scientists know that this stuff is coming to Earth, and we all know um, our, our finest scientists and nuclear physicists have told us that this is going to be very, very powerful matter. Um, extremely dangerous, right? Thirty years ago, uh, the two different agencies from the UK and the United States of America saw that there was alien wreckage, a ghost ship coming in from space, and that it would land in what our show now has as present day. Uh, in the meantime, they established two separate agencies uh, that came together in a coalition called Orbital. Our two characters come together to discover what this technology has to offer our world, the effects it has on the people that discover it, uh, and to retrieve it and bring it back for further investigation. Each week is like a new piece to the puzzle of discovering what this alien debris wreckage is and how it affects both the characters, Fanola and Brian, as well as the people who discover um, the technology itself and who we are as a, a human species. Brian Beneventi is uh, the CIA operative, the partner to Fanola Jones from MI6, uh, as the two uh, kind of heroes of orbital in our story. Brian is a former Special Forces, was saved um, spiritually and physically out of a, a very difficult situation overseas by a mentor father named Maddox, played by Norbert Leo Butts. And this mission that I'm on now is as much to kind of repair myself as it is to uh, serve my country uh, and the mission at large. In many ways, I am um, the counterbalance uh, in terms of practicality to the emotional, um, kind of more science-driven approach that, uh, that Fanola Jones brings to, uh, to our, our, uh, our orbital team. Brian and Fanola come from dramatically different backgrounds and have very different perspectives on the world um, and on how to problem solve. But what the debris does is it brings them together um, in a unique and fun and very real way where emotionally they both have to open up to each other in order to um, be successful. That the powers against them are so strong and the people who um, want to um, take this debris into their own hands for, um, for nefarious purposes. What they're capable of doing, what they're willing to do, um, is so extraordinary that if we're unable to trust each other, unable to be honest with each other, unable to uh, open ourselves up to one another, we won't stand a chance um, at succeeding. Brian is immensely practical. He knows how to execute. Um, he's got a great sense of humor, and um, I think audiences will find him to be uh, totally relatable um, and filled with also some mysteries that they're going to hope to have uh, unraveled over the course of the first season. Fanola and Brian, this kind of yin and yang uh, partnership, are both actually after very similar things. And as a reader of the scripts, and I think as an audience watching the show, you start to understand that, um, you know, we're all a lot more united than we think we are, uh, at least on the surface, or what we think, what, what appears to be on the surface. And I think this first season really is as simple as a young woman looking to find her father and uh, a young man um, saying goodbye to his father. And in that journey, um, of awareness, you, you kind of fall in love with, with both of these people. As an actor, it's fun because I'm having a similar response to some of the sensational elements as I would as a, a, as a, as a character. And part of what makes our show much, have a much more appeal than simply to a sci-fi audience is that um, these are things that you can see happening. There's a, um, there's a reality to our show that one might not expect based on some of the fantastic things that they see on screen. We are constantly surprised by the power of this debris. People 
appear and reappear in different places. People age in reverse. People can read somebody else's minds. Um, people get trapped in different time, layers of time and time zones. So, um, you know, we are, we are in search of finding some sort of consistency with the debris and constantly surprised at how dynamic it is. Week to week, you don't know what mystery is going to be presented and revealed on our show. I was drawn to debris for a handful of reasons. I like sci-fi. I haven't done sci-fi. And this is the sort of grounded show within that world that allows us to explore some of the sensational elements um, without having to suspend disbelief. I like artificial intelligence. I like alien technology. And in the hands of a showrunner like Joel Wyman, uh, I knew we would have a world to explore that would be wholly unique. One of the exciting parts about working on debris is that we're telling very real grounded stories of human emotion, of interconnection. Every time we discover a new piece of debris, it reflects uh, more clearly on who we are as characters in the show and on who we are as um, as human beings and if we can somehow rebuild this ghost ship by putting these different pieces together we might end up figuring out um, that we can heal ourselves we can rebuild ourselves all of these characters um, and frankly all human beings are um, trying to fill voids um, heal wounds see the world more clearly um, we're all slightly damaged, and this debris helps um, put our lives and our perspectives into context. Hi, my name is Ryan Steele, and I play Fanola Jones. The whole premise of the show is about um, some mysterious alien um, wreckage debris is um, falling to Earth, and two agents um, are part of a uh, secretive uh, team, a, a coalition of America and UK, the CIA and the um, MI6 and they are tasked with um, finding the debris and finding out where it's from and what it does and more importantly stopping it from getting into the hands of people that can um, abuse it. With each uh, week there is uh, a mystery kind of element to each each uh, episode, and so over the course of the series, we see um, we see these characters come together and and solve the mystery, while at the same time confronting each piece of debris and what that means for us as humans, for humanity, and and themselves. Uh, so there is a great, amazing arc to the whole series. Fanola Jones is um, a character that is full of heart and full of empathy and is in a place in her life that she is discovering, having to put herself back together uh, as a result of grief. She also is following in her father's footsteps. He was an astrophysicist and she also is tasked with um, un uh, the understanding the science of what is going on and and journeying with Brian who um, is also uh, partnering with her uh, in solving these mysteries and I've really really enjoyed getting to know her and um, connecting with her her ability through empathy to connect with other people and connect straight to the heart and understand that we are here because of a, a larger purpose, a bigger purpose. It isn't just about, um, you know, what we see, it's what we don't see. It's, it's the universe, how we are all part of this um, ecosystem. What I really love about the show is that I can really identify with it and I can identify with um, my character Fanola. I 
too was a child that um, looked up at the stars and spent all my time, you know, as much as I could in the planetarium. And I still, to this day, ask myself, like, all the questions of why we're here and what does it all mean. Joel's writing is just amazing and and the journey of each of my character and each character is, is so full of heart and so full of emotion and there's so much depth to it and combined with answering and working out these questions that we all have about why we're here and 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 we're and placing us in this this world where we're having to confront what if what if there is intelligent life forms what if there is debris that's um falling and we have to put that back together what does that say about us and what does that say about the world and as humans i'm really really excited for people to uh to watch this with us and and come on this journey with us i'm just yeah the writing's just brilliant